My name's Karen Campagna and I have lived in Froome for almost 40 years. I have been interested in art since I was a small child when I would draw all the time and I even won a painting competition when I was 10, much to my amazement. I went on and did A-level um, and I really wanted to do an art foundation year but I was dissuaded by careers advisors and my parents because they said, well, you want to go and be a teacher and you don't want to be a teacher of art, um, so just get on with it. However, I hung on to that idea of doing an art foundation year for many years. I became a teacher uh, in London and then in Oxford and more locally to Froome. Um, I had a wonderful time of many years teaching special needs children and uh, primary children and even some very gifted children. Um, I worked for a period of time in the local bookshop too um, and all the time I hankered after the Art Foundation year which I eventually had the opportunity to do when I was in my 40s and I grasped it with both hands and I thoroughly enjoyed indulging in almost a whole year from the end of September to the end of May um, in a studio five days a week with lots of young people learning loads of new things, um, including printmaking and becoming interested in textiles. I had a wonderful time. Uh, when I finished that year, I couldn't go on and do a degree, but I carried on doing my own uh, printmaking and uh, making pieces of textile art. Uh, I had a few exhibitions uh, with other people and solo as well. Um, and I carried on making my own artwork um, as and when I could. Then in July, 2022, um, Neil Oliver, uh, someone that I'd known for many years, uh, told me about a project that he was initiating, um, bringing together a group of artists local to Froome with uh, artists that had been displaced by um, the war um, in Ukraine. Um, so I decided that I would like to be part of that group um, and I have been ever since. It's been an absolute privilege to have had the opportunity to work alongside artists that have found themselves in a situation that we can't even begin to imagine. They are displaced within Europe and within their homeland of Ukraine. Um, they have greatly altered lives, which they live daily. Um, and our project is like a um, respite for them. And when they can, they produce artwork, um, as do we, and upload it to digital platforms. And we exchange dialogue through art and also through word using an interpreter when we can, when we meet uh, on Zoom. Um, being part of the project for me has made me think about the world um, and a world in conflict, which seems very much the case at the moment. Um, it's made me think about where art fits into that. Um, and it's also made me think about the sort of art that I want to produce. And as part of this project, I've changed the way that I work and all the artwork that I have done for the project has been collage. So we continue with the project. I will continue to be part of it for as long as the project is needed. The Ukrainian artists tell us that uh, for them, it's been a lifeline at times, that they really appreciate the friendship that we've offered and the opportunity to hear them 
and see them. Um, and I hope that uh, they know that we will be here for them for as long as the project is needed. I'm Tonya. I am an artist living and working in Maiden Bradley, which is a small village just over the border from Froome in Wiltshire. It sits on top of a windy hill and is pretty remote. Um, landscape inspires quite a lot of my abstract work, particularly walking in the woods or up on the hills or the downs where you can see the weather rolling in. Um, I'm particularly interested in wilderness and this idea that we are all part of a much bigger place um, and that feeling of being very small in a very big landscape is something that I hold on to when I'm working. My working process is quite experimental. Um, I spend a lot of time making quite a mess in my studio. I'm sitting in my new studio, I've just recently moved into it, it's in the heart of the village, outside of my home, which is fantastic and has made a big difference already to the scale of the work that I can produce and also the flow. Um, so yeah, experimentation is a key aspect of my work. I tend to use the same materials but look for different ways of manipulating those using different tools, not necessarily brushes but scraps of cardboard, found materials. Old paintings are frequently chopped up and used as collage uh, if I'm looking for a way to get into an idea and I'm not quite sure yet how it's going to work out. I like to use old work or work that I feel has come to an end point and repurpose that or recycle it in some way. I am really enjoying being part of 
the artists in dialogue group. It's pushing me out of my comfort zone quite significantly, which is a challenge which I'm enjoying very much. And it's allowing me to engage with um, people who I wouldn't necessarily have an opportunity to learn about. I'm, I've always been interested in languages and traveling, so it's a natural extension of that. And I'm very grateful to be part of this diverse and interesting and exciting group of artists. Hello, my name's Lorna Thomas. I live just outside Froome in a village called Watley, high on the Mendips. The cows come to our wall in the summer evenings and lean over for all the world as if they're looking at the television. And then across the fields you can see on the horizon the church spire and the farm outbuildings. And to me that scene epitomised peace. And it was this peace that I wished for the people of Ukraine. Neil asked me if I would like to join a group called Artists in Dialogue, along with Anna, a Ukrainian living in Froome, as interpreter. He could find some Ukrainians who would have online conversations through art with us. But all I knew was I was being asked because of the strength of my artwork and I was very nervous about that, but he persuaded me. We had a few emails to and fro. And Neil, I am so grateful to you that you persuaded me to say yes. I'd love to be one of the artists in dialogue. I learned a lot in teaching about myself and about how life circumstances affect people. And one thing I learned that has remained steady throughout my life is that I'm always on the side of the underdog. As time went on and my own family grew up, I decided that I was going to start pursuing something of my own interests and I began the traditional route of going to evening classes. In art, of course, I'm really obsessed by learning and wanting to follow the, the wealth of creativity that is out there in the world of art. I've been so fortunate in finding some amazing teachers in this area. I've been very strict with myself. I've made sure that I've sort of filled all the boxes of uh, what I might have done if I'd have gone to art college. I've tried a bit of everything and it was only printing, especially screen printing where I really really came to grief but apart from that I've learned and absorbed much as I possibly can in as many different areas as I can from as many wonderful superb teachers as I've been able to find but a lot of the fun now is actually pushing myself and playing and experimenting and seeing how I can do different takes on different things and allowing the inspiration to push me further to improve my work. Somehow it seems a bit wrong to say how much I enjoy being part of Artists and Dialogue because I absolutely wish there was no war. But having said that, I appreciate the privilege of being trusted by Ukrainian artists in order to work with them and respond to them in this wonderful world of painting. I am definitely more inspired by emotive work. Because I'm a not-for-profit artist, I am inclined to 
paint things that people might like to buy. The most satisfying work I do is work that is forced out of me by the need to put things that I'm not good at talking about into some visual form. I'm moving towards acrylic more because it can be more spontaneous. Previously, I preferred working more slowly with oil. But another advantage of the acrylics is it's opened up a whole new world of wonderful fluorescent colours because I do like a bit of colour. And even when I'm doing very sombre works, so I'm inclined to have something sparkling coming into it. These are my favourite implements. I love using my fingers. I use sponges and I use, um, obviously, brushes and scrapers and other things that are necessary to art. And again, I stress that I feel very fortunate that I've been able to do this in my adulthood with the sheer joy of learning all there is to learn in a bottomless pit of the world called art. I also appreciate very much the stretching that I've had of communication with these wonderful artists in Ukraine. And I hope that other people will be inspired, maybe, to find similar groups for themselves, or at the very least take up painting themselves, because if I can do it, why can't you? My name is Pam Warner. Uh, I was born into a creative family. My mother sang soprano and she also played the piano. And my father had a tenor voice. He was also a, a craftsman and I would stand for ages watching him work as a child. And he also spent a lot of time teaching me how to draw. And I used to spend a lot of time just copying characters out of copy, comic books. Uh, at 15, I went to uh, life drawing classes, but I have to admit that when I first walked through the door and saw an almost naked man, I absolutely freaked out and hid behind the door. And it was only when another young woman went in that I had the courage to go in. But this piqued my interest in the human form. And uh, it's something that I've always enjoyed drawing. Uh, at, uh, as a mature student, I went on a combined honours degree course doing fine art, drama and theatre studies and art. And uh, whilst studying art, I was in the print department. So print is really my main training. It was only a few years later that I began to paint. So I actually see myself as a, a colourist and as a self-taught painter. I moved to Froome in 2021 and joined the Art Society at a time when the war had just broken out in Ukraine, which distressed me greatly seeing all the suffering that this unjust war and unnecessary war was causing. So I uh, very gladly took the invitation to donate a painting in order to raise funds for Ukrainian refugees. 
As a result of the success of that exhibition, we, those who participated were invited to think about taking this project further, working with Ukrainian artists. So I, I actually felt this really appealed to me because I not only could help tangibly, but also use art as a medium in which that could be um, uh, as a conduit, really, for forming friendships and support. Uh, so this was uh, an amazing opportunity, a, a very challenging opportunity with the concepts of war vocabulary that uh, we were painting to, but also the work that was so talented and expressed through the suffering of their war, through the, the loss, the destruction. And uh, it was a very moving, it's very moving to see their work. And as a result of the first year, the Ukrainians wanted something lighter, something more um, uplifting as, as, a, as a project. So we, we entered in phase two of hope, vocabulary of hope. And although it's been a very challenging time to, to uh, push me, uh, push my boundaries of art and what I thought my capabilities, it's it's been a, a, a very rewarding time and the most joyful time was meeting three of the Ukrainian artists in Rabka, which helped form and cement this bond that we have between us now. So I have committed to, to continue with this project until the very end.